Welcome to Faith That Works, exploring the changed lives of those living by faith. Your host, Bob McHouston, will spotlight ordinary people who have discovered for themselves a faith that works. Thank you and welcome to another program of A Faith That Works. This is a television program that talks about a faith, but not the kind of faith that is the kind of faith that we label as our denomination, not a faith that is of our own minds that we can just say, hey, I have faith. Not as in faith in, uh, that is going to rain today. But this is a faith that comes out of us when we have an encounter with Jesus Christ and being born again. And we want you to hear these stories, these testimonies about a faith that works. Before we go to our guest today, you have a book that's right there on your screen. There's a, there's a, uh, a number there for a book. It's a new birth book written by Bob McHouston, uh, the director that left us here about a month and a half ago and is in glory. And uh, he wants us to keep doing this program because he loves you. We love you. We want you to hear these stories. And today we have with us David Panel. David, you live here in Tupelo and around the area? I do, I do. I live right downtown, almost at Crosstown in Tupelo in a, uh, a house that we moved into about six years ago uh, that has a lawn that's about the size of this uh, platform that we're sitting on right now mm -hmm. and moved there from a 70-acre uh, farm out in the middle of nowhere in Chickasaw County mm -hmm. where my wife and I raised our kids. We have uh, two kids that are grown now, but during their whole Growing up years, we lived in Chickasaw County on a working farm with cows and pigs and horses and chickens and the whole shebang. And why did you give that up? Why wouldn't I give it up? <laughs> I got tired. D different story. Yeah, so. no, it was wonderful. We had a great farm experience and I loved the farm life and I was very uh, idealistic about the idea of farm living. And uh, it strikes me as a really good, healthy way to, lead, uh, to live, a health-giving way to live, a great way mm -hmm. to raise children, keeps them out of a lot of trouble and they're mm -hmm. around a lot of wholesome things. They get to see yeah. nature yeah. and a lot of beauty all around them, uh, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. Animals, taking care of animals. It's, it's, a, it's incredible. People don't understand. They, they look at a farm from a distance. You always drive past a little you know, idealistic farm with a little barn and a mm -hmm, little house. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, what a sweet little life. But the reality is uh, somebody's got to feed every animal out there every day. And if you decide you're going to go away overnight, somebody's got to feed that animal for you. Yeah, and, and we did the same thing right out of seminary. Uh, we had this bright idea we were going to get some milk goats. Yeah. It's because I'm going to teach my kids work ethics. There you go. I mean, that's, is that why you teach That was your a kids? lot of it. Yeah, just all those wonderful values. You can't get them hardly any other way. Well, did you end up milking the goats like We didn't I have did? any goats now. We oh, never you got did, the goats. Did you, did, what, tell, what kind of animals do you have? Well, we, had, uh, we always raised our own uh, our cow, uh, a cow for beef. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We had, some, we had a l small herd of, of commercial mm -hmm. uh, feeder cows, but we also would put up a cow every year to, to feed out, you know, corn feed. And that was a wonderful uh, teaching tool for our kids as well, mm -hmm. teaching them about where food comes from and how hard it is to produce food and at what labor you have to go to to get it and uh, if you've raised and fed and cared for that animal you know mm -hmm. every day for a long time then take it to the slaughterhouse and you bring it back in packages and put it in the freezer and then take it out and cook it on the stove you got a pretty good idea of, of where food comes from and and mm -hmm. uh, you have more gratitude for it I think. Well David were you a family that went to church was church real big uh, even growing up as yes. a kid? Yes, absolutely. I've cut my teeth on the pews at the church where uh, where we had gone, and my father was a preacher. Uh, my my grandparents before my father were church folks, mm. uh, and on my mother's side, my my grandmother was a crazy religious person. She was a religious. Nut. Now, now, what's crazy religious? Well, I think there's a lot of different kinds of religion, and <laughs> some kinds of religion make you crazy. Uh -huh. And the religion my grandmother had made her crazy. Mm -hmm. And maybe her crazy preceded her religion. I, won't, I shouldn't say it made her crazy, but she, mm -hmm. religion was part of her crazy. I see. And I see. my grandfather, they were this really odd couple, um, very unhappy together. This is my mother's folks. Um, they were very unhappy together. My my. 
grandmother was a very rigid, strict, hard shell Baptist, uh -huh. uh, but never knew a day of peace or joy in her life, it seemed like. Just a real tortured, tormented person, thought too much, worried too much, anxious, um, very distrustful. And I don't know, her, her religion didn't seem to, to do her much good. And then my grandfather was the polar opposite. He had no faith, professed no faith, and made no bones about the fact that he didn't have mm -hmm. any faith. And he was openly contemptuous of her faith and of other people who were believers. So it was a strange kind of brew. Well, it, how did that have an effect on you, or did it? It made me crazy. Okay. Yeah. Are you yeah. still crazy? A little bit. All right. <laughs> I'm getting better, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't help. Uh, yeah, I was wound up pretty tight uh, because of all of that stuff. And then the, the church that, that was all crazy. Uh -huh. And then the church that my father grew up in, the denomination that he grew up in, and the mindset that it had, in, to my way of thinking, was a, a recipe for gotcha. crazy because it was all about us being right and everybody else being wrong. You know, if you weren't one of us, you were going to go to hell, and we weren't so sure about some of us, you know. When I use the word crazy, I, of course, I'm not dishonoring your parents. No, 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 I understand. What, what I'm asking is, I guess, uh, which, which sounds like this is leading to, so legalism? Oh, would yeah. Would that be Absolutely. a term that would? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Very rigid, very rule-bound, very joyless, you know, uh, fear as the great motivator for Righteousness. Gotcha. Which has to make you crazy. Gotcha. Has to, you know. Yeah. Fear. Fear. Yeah. I heard an acrostic one time of fear, F E A R, false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. For the Christian, that's what it is. Because uh, God tells us that He did not give us a spirit of fear, but that of love and power Thank and you. a sound mind. And there's no power in fear. That's it right. It robs you of all power. Because yeah, perfect love drives yeah, out fear. That's right. So when did you come to that place, David? When did, when was that, when did that light bulb go off that changed you? Yeah, I, I don't think it went off all of a sudden. I wish I could report a, you know, a, a strange warming or an encounter in which all was revealed, but it, it didn't work that way for me. It was incremental and over a lot of time and a lot of steps along the way that you know, a little bit of unshackling and a little more, a little more, gotcha. a little more. I'm 53 years old and I still feel like I'm in recovery I from see. a lot of that I stuff. See. Well, tell me what happened. Was, I mean, was, even though the process, it sounds like you, you, you know, you're growing like all of us. Sure, thank uh, God, yeah. That an earlier show we used, uh, don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of the world, be transformed by the renewing of your yeah, mind. Absolutely. But that renewing of the mind, um, Something happens internally to us when we meet the living Christ. You bet it does. And we begin to follow Him. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. So when did you start seeing the grace, the love of God? And I mean the love of God as He... I, I, I think the farm helped me see a lot of it, I, I, quite yeah. honestly. Uh, I, th I think for me, I was so damaged by my experience. Right of religion as a kid, um, that it took me the longest time and I was so wounded by a lot of those things. I don't mean to sound like a victim or like I'm blaming. Uh, I take full responsibility for my life and choices. That's right. But even so, it took me a long time just to sort of begin to heal up a little bit. And I think uh, it, it, was, it had been so traumatic that I left faith I see. completely for years. And my experience on the farm uh, for much of that time, there was an overlap between the life on the farm and a life apart from organized religion. And during that time, I kind of tried to, you know, explore, think about different alternate gospels, you know, alternate paths, alternate ways to find meaning, peace, you know, all the things we yearn for. Um, and, and I'll tell you one thing that turned the key for me was we had had some friends, dear friends, who were our friends before that experience of leaving the church. Mm -hmm. And then once we left the church, we were, were out of the loop with a lot of those people for a long time, and our relationships with all those people mm -hmm. kind of fell away. But this one little couple stuck to us and stuck with us, and we're so 
uh, gracious to us and so loving toward us during the time that we were in open rebellion from religion and from the church. And these were church folks. Uh, and they showed us so much grace. They, I think, began, they began to show a light for us uh, that just showed me that, you know, they, if, that's what, if that's what the real deal is, if that's, if that's where Jesus is, then that, you know, that's something I'd like to have back in my life. And I, I began slowly, slowly, slowly to, you know, op open back up cautiously mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. let a little more light in. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah. kids were... You had two, right? Two kids who had okay. two very different formative experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shows in the people they are as adults. Our daughter is 29. And during the time she was a kid, we were in that sort of wilderness wandering for mm -hmm. a lot of the time that she was growing up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she's a, you know, a very deeply spiritual person, but also a very free spirit, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then our son came along eight years later, and by the time he came around, we were sort of tracking back into church and back into the kind of people who we'd been affiliated with beforehand. And so they're just two really, really different people, and it's almost mm -hmm. like they grew up in two different homes because mm -hmm. what we were doing was so different. Got you. At Got the time. Did, yeah. did, was there a, you said you went away from the church, or you got away from organized religion, or. Mm -hmm something like that. Um, where'd you go? I went everywhere. I went down every rabbit hole in the universe. Okay. I became a hippie for a right. while. Uh, and I played a lot of bluegrass and smoked a lot of weed. Um, and ran around with a lot of people that, you know, I was searching for higher consciousness. I was searching for an alternative to uh, that world view, and you know, everybody's got one. And right, I was right. searching for any, you know, peg to hang my hat mm -hmm. on, and I tried that for a while. And it, I was just a little too square to ever be a really fully bona fide good hippie, and I sort of left that after a while. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I never never got really dirty enough to yeah. function as a really, you know, card-carrying hippie. Right. Um, right. So I, I finally left that, and I, I, I just didn't do anything for a long time. And then I got involved with the Unitarian Church for a while. You know, sort of all roads lead to Rome, all, all, all paths are equally valid kind of deal and explored that for a while. And I don't know, I just, I missed, I missed belief. I missed orthodoxy. I missed, I missed something that uh, was either true or wasn't true. And I wasn't finding it in any of those places. Mm. So sounds like a, like a prodigal son. Oh, completely. The prodigal son story. Completely. Yeah, yeah. and I have an older brother who is... If I'm the prodigal, he is. He is the. He's from central casting. The the older, responsible, oh. you know, very compliant older brother who had all the same experiences growing up that I had, but who never left the path. Mm -hmm. So I can't blame it on my upbringing. Mm -hmm. It was on my my own waywardness. Right, right. I'm curious. Do, do, do you believe you were born again then, or were you born again later? Do you, what, what are your thoughts on that, man? I think that's been a slow process. I'm yeah. not sure where I am exactly theologically on born again. I, I believe that is both an event and a process. Yep. But, it, it, you know, the moment that Christ or God shows me sin, or I, I don't have to, I know it's there. Yeah. But I become aware of it. And uh, I begin to see what love is for the first time when I see that God demonstrated love toward me and while I was yet a sinner, mm -hmm. Christ died. I don't know love until I know that love because that love purchased me, bought me, adopted me, sure. adopted you. Yeah. And, and, and if I'm adopted, that means God picked me out. Yeah, that's And He did that to you. And let me say that, is that, you know, some of you, uh, like David, you know, I heard Adrian Rogers say one time that sin will take you further than you ever wanted to go, keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay, and cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. And like the prodigal son, you know, you get out there and you go your own way and you think, man, this is going to be great. There's got to be something else out there. And that weed for a while <laughs> makes you think you have something that's really good. And it may not be weed. With you, it may be alcohol. It may be another kind of drug. It may be pornography. It may be shopping. It may be uh, 
gambling. It can be anything that will take you out there and you, and you believe that you're out there until you wake up in the hog pen, right, David? And that hog pen, for a long time, I came back. When I came to the Father, and he, he, here's the great thing. All God is looking for us to do is start making our way back home. Is start walking toward Him. Walking toward God. So if you're out there in the mud, I don't have to redefine what mud is. Is any place other than being with the Father. And when you start making your way back toward Him, what you're going to find is this. Not look at that scoundrel coming. What does he want? He must want some more money. If your heart wants him, he'll run out after you because he loves you that much and he embraces you and he welcomes you home. And David, I mean, you're at the Unitarian Church, right? That's right. And that's, that's that universal... That's right. Yeah, all paths have equal validity. All truths are... Not true, but they all have their, you know, practical gotcha. merits. They're all just a way for us to cope with gotcha. life. You know, uh, God's grace, His love, drawing you back to Him. I mean, you know, a lot of people go to that place and they're still searching. They're out there still searching. Sure. They're still looking. They're never going to find it. Yeah. There is no peace outside of God. Yeah. yeah. And, and tell me this, where... Uh, in, in this journey, uh, you were a hippie. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, a hippie. <laughs> I heard that word a long time. Right, yeah. Did, did you follow the Grateful Dead? Yeah, I absolutely okay. did. I okay. went to the shows, uh, you know, I did the deal and had the ponytail. So, you were a the, deadhead. Had the, well, no, I never, I okay. never went, I, I would not claim to be a deadhead. True deadheads would say that I was a poser. I, I, I was a, a, a late comer to, to, the music of the Grateful Dead. I was mm -hmm. a grown man, you know, when all of this was sure, sure. happening, okay. and this was for a season. So really, it was really just sort of a pose. It was a, a, a something to try on for a while. But I never, yeah. I never became the guy who was a roving gypsy. But you know, I went to the shows, I listened to the music, I hung out with the people, I did all the stuff. And they're not, they're not bad people. They're a lot of them are very, very bright, very sensitive people that are, they're searching. Yeah. For, right. for meaning, they're they're looking for the same things everybody yeah. else is looking for. That's, that's excellent. We had we had a guy. Yeah. We had a, a a pastor that was on at an earlier show that was sharing that very thing. Yeah. They're just like I mean they're out there. Yeah. And they're just like us. Yeah. And we need to go out there and love on them. Absolutely. We, we need to get. They got truth. That Absolutely. We, and we have it. They need it. And and looking back on it, you know, from a vantage point of experience and age, I see now that. Most of the people who self-identify as hippies are, are people who are not as selfish, not as hedonistic as you might think. They're really people that are in pain. They are people that are disillusioned. They're people that are damaged. They're, people, they're, they're searching for an alternative to whatever, you know, mainstream society seems to be presenting them with. They're searching. Yeah. You know? Right, right. And so we have to have compassion, you know. Absolutely, because we were yeah. once searching. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. I'm <laughs> if I want mercy, I better be given some mercy. Yeah. Right? And, and I I'm troubled by the church's posture toward hippie culture or toward, you know, any alternate path mm -hmm. as a little dismissive and and without the compassion to say the, the reason they're doing that is that they're lost and they're searching. Right. You know. Well, let me, let me ask you this now, because I think about sort of just going back about uh, legalism or things of that nature. Did that turn into a, 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 an outright rebellion? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And let me tell you about the, 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 real, the real double dip of okay. evil was in all of this. My father was a preacher, okay. and he sexually abused me when I was a kid. Oh. Mm. So, you know... That was mm. that's pretty rough, um, and it's just real hard to. As a kid, you can't, and even as an adult, it's hard to then go back and and put the pieces back together and say, all right, well that was him, you know that was his damage. That's that wasn't the church. That wasn't Jesus. That wasn't love, you know. It takes a heck of a long time, if ever. To winnow all that out so that you can, you know, not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, yeah. I found out after 
searching everywhere else in the world that I, I needed Jesus. Yeah. I needed grace. I needed love. I needed all those things, but it took just so long to, to, to push that other stuff back far enough so that I could get some, some clarity on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have to go through a lot of counseling? Did no, you? I probably should have. And, and in fact, I, I didn't even talk about this openly okay. until probably a couple of years ago. Yeah. Which, and I, I regret that I didn't do that because I can see sure. now that I spent a lot of years just kind of holding on to a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have. Well, I, I regret that I didn't. God's got a lot of healing for you anyway. He does, he does. And He's I, got that for you now. I, I describe myself as a, as a person who's almost like a stroke victim. Gotcha. You know, I'm, I'm kind of learning how to walk. I'm learning how to talk. I'm learning okay. how to hold a fork again. I'm, yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, I heard a, an equation or it's a formula, whatever you want to call it, that all rules and regulation without relationship equals rebellion. Yeah. Say it again. All rules all and regulation. All rules and regulation without relationship yeah. will equal rebellion. Yeah, absolutely. And why should we be surprised that a, that a person would rebel against such a, mm -hmm. you know, such a system? That's, there, there's not much Jesus in that, and there's not much right. joy, and there's not much hope, there's not much redemption. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Why would all. a person want to do that, you know? Uh, that's right, that's right. So you've been on quite a journey. It, it has been a journey. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, you know our journey is never over. Our journey is, you know, I, 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 I meet people in our church that are in their eighties, and man, they're reading that Bible every day. And you yeah. think, man, how long have you been a Christian? Well, I've been a Christian for sixty something years, you know. Mm -hmm. And they read that Bible just as much as they do today. They did, yeah, you know, because, you know. Um, the Bible or, or the Word, God's truth, uh, Rhema, Logos, what, you know, that Word, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit revealing truth in me as, as I walk this journey, there's a lot in that journey. Oh, you bet. That, that journey He's teaching me about His love as, 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 as a father that you know, holds me like a, you know, gathers me like a little chick. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a hard place for you It's to hard get. for me to get there. Hard for me to get there, and I crave it with my whole heart. Well, it's there, though. Yeah. And, and that truth is, regardless of how you feel, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love... Which you know, is why I think nothing else but a, a path that had some kind of north star, some kind of true north, some kind of center that was in fact true, not just helpful, not just a coping mechanism, not just a, you know, a way to get through the night, but something yeah. in fact true is, is, yeah. is what the soul is in search of, I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, Scripture says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And nothing else will. Amen. I mean, a lot of times we, we, we can know the feelings but Scripture doesn't say you can know the feelings and the feelings will set That's you right. free. That's <laughs> right. It's true. Yeah, and you can spend your whole life living out Brother, of the feelings. And you know, and, and I, and I want to say this. I want to say this. Five minutes. It is that, in, in, you know, in this journey, when, and, and I teach people, especially in marriage counseling, you know, if you're waiting on to feel something for you to do what's right and what the Lord wants you to do, you're never going to understand what it is uh, to obey God by truth and, and, and walk by truth. I, I, there's a lot of times that God will call me to do something and, uh, and serve my wife. <laughs> I don't feel like it. I can tell you I don't. And she can tell you probably that more than that. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing because love will reciprocate. If I, if I produce or if I give you love, if I... If I breathe love into you, love is patient, love is kind. If I'm that way toward my wife, she will want to do that toward me. A law now, of sowing and reaping. It is. Yeah, yeah and, and so, you know, whatever God's doing uh, in your life now and, and wherever He's taken you in this and the journey, um, the interesting thing is the moment that you confess that stuff and talk to somebody about it, 
did you did you begin to to to, to sense freedom? Oh, of course, okay. of course, yeah. And and exposing that to members of my own family was traumatic and gotcha. just icky and gross and weird. Sure, and, but no an instant sense of a lightening of that burden, you yeah. know. Yeah. Just, you know, the facts are always friendly. Right. It's so true. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. It just and it hit it hit on. So yeah. uh, so tell me about what's going on now. What's what's the big well, thing going on in David's the, life? The, I'll tell you what's been interesting for me. Of course, I was a preacher for many years. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For for most of my life, I was a preacher in that same church, and not to knock that church, I guess I I'm am sure. knocking it. But anyway, just couldn't seem to swing out of its orbit somehow. Um, but I finally, after many years, uh, and it had been a church a preacher in a little church, just a small rural country church where I loved the people. And it was a great church, and it didn't fit the pattern of what I was describing at all. It was from that denomination, but the people were not that way. And it just, it was a nice place to be, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But after 15 years, mm -hmm. I left about two months ago. And that has See. felt freeing as well. That's gotcha. been another uh, lightening of a burden, you know, just that sense of, uh, uh, I don't know, it's a, a, a weight that that seemed to carry with it, you know, of A, of being a preacher, and, and B, of still being in the orbit of that same universe that had caused me a lot of pain before. Being free from that has been a real liberation for me. I see. And an interesting thing has happened. Um, not preaching, not having to study, not having to write sermons and do all those things. Uh, uh, I f oddly, I find that I have just as great a hunger for and an even greater joy in personal study and personal devotion and those things than I had when I was doing that as a as a professional. Yeah, yeah. Which has been nice. Yeah, I, I think if we've if we've journeyed, if we've walked with, if we've walked with Christ, if we follow Christ, you know, there, there's those times, there's that time, there's that season uh, that we go through. Um, you know, Jesus there was times we went out, and he, and he had to get away. Oh, sure. He had to get away and, yeah. and spend time alone with the Father. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've uh, enjoyed that. That's been quite yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a. Uh, I don't get enough of it. Yeah, <laughs> I wish yeah, it. yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry for people that never get to not have something expected of them. Yeah, well, good. I mean, uh, father still alive? No. Okay. Died about six years ago. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Uh, good relationship with your children? Excellent. Think, that's awesome. Excellent. Thank I mean, God. That is so Thank great. God. A wonderful relationship with my wife. You know, we that's have a good. very peaceful, serene, happy marriage. And I got you. Uh, so, what are you doing now that you're not preaching? Breathing. Breathing in and okay. out. And okay. Smiling yeah. and thinking that I don't have to write a sermon Sunday, and that I can, you know, go to church okay. and not uh, nobody's going to be calling my name and asking me who's mad or who's going to, you know, write a check or who's going to leave or who's going to stay or any of those things. It's been quite nice. I tell you what, we've heard some good stuff here from David. A lot that we need to do some self-examination. This has been a faith that works. Help support Faith Ministries by getting your car washed. Bob's Mobile Car Wash will come to you. All proceeds help the ministry to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Call us today, 303-662-2000.